Hello and welcome back. Let's take a look at Camtasia on Windows real fast. So let me switch over to my Windows right here. And you can see I have Camtasia already up. Before I run through a couple of options here, I'll go ahead and delete that. Whenever you drag and drop this on here, Whenever you do that, it's going to present you with a pop-up that's going to ask you what size you want to edit with. So let me see if I can do a new project here. And I'm going to pull over my file. Whenever I drag and drop it onto the bottom here, it's going to ask me what dimensions I want. And I always recommend you do recording dimensions. And that's going to give you the biggest size possible. So some of these others are kind of random. They usually fit with whatever size. So if it's 480 or 720 or whatever. But I always recommend you hit recording dimensions. Because that's going to give you the biggest size possible. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through here. And I'm going to edit my presentation here. And the keyboard shortcut to split is S on Windows on Camtasia here and so now I'm just going to drag and I'm going to drop this back to zero here and then I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to do the same thing I'm just going to cut out this last little bit here I'm going to use S again you can also use this icon right here that split and so I'm just going to hit delete here and now my webinar is good to go. I'm completely edited here and really editing for a screen recording is the same theory here as well. If I was doing a webinar, I could throw a transition on here, which is usually what I do. I throw on a fade to black. And so you'll notice whenever I grab this transition, where I can drop it glows. So you'll see the yellow right there glow, and I just drop that one on there. And then it'll highlight in green where I can actually drop it. So let me do that here at the end as well. So you'll notice it turns yellow, and then whenever I drop it, it turns bluish greenish, and then you drop it and it's yellow there on there. And so now, okay, goodbye. My transition is complete. You've seen me do that a couple of times. Really the biggest reason why I do that is because it, it cleans the recording up. It shows when the definite start and stop to the video is. So that's just kind of a personal preference. It's something that I learned a long time ago to do. And it just kind of keeps everything clean. You'll notice that Camtasia, a lot like ScreenFlow, has the same options. So you can add callouts here. You can add a big blue box here. And of course, you can change the color if you want it to be black. And then you can also change the effect here. So if you want it to be like a button style, you can do that. And it kind of looks like a button. And you also notice that it automatically puts on a transition, just a fade in transition, and that's it. And so it keeps it super simple. So I'll delete that. And you also notice you have arrows. So you can take the arrows and drag them around. So let's say I wanted to point to the actual training here. And you can customize just about everything. And then you can grab that little dot right there and rotate the icon. And so that's how you can use an arrow. You, you also notice you have sliders everywhere so you can adjust the size of the triangle there on the end of the arrow or whatever you want to do. I'll go ahead and delete that. You have circles on here. You have double arrows. And as we scroll down, you also see you have thought bubbles. And you have little call out, little star options. It, this almost looks like a cartoon looking thing. And then you also have you know different kinds of arrows. And just like ScreenFlow, you also notice you have a blur box here. So you can take and you can blur this out right here. And you also have a call out button. So you can take that box and convert it to a call out. It will lighten your focus. And then you also notice it will blur and darken the, the background back here. And you can also highlight. So you can make this, you know, if you want to, if you want to highlight the training here, you can do so simply as that. You can also add text box. So if I wanted to add a text box in there, you can do that as well. And you can see how easy that Camtasia makes this process to add these different elements in here. You also notice that you have a few more options. You have a, a pixelate, which is a little bit heavier than a blur. It, it literally blots out everything. You can't see anything. And you also notice that just like ScreenFlow, you also notice that you have keystroke options. This makes it a little bit easier than the actual ScreenFlow option. You can type what key and then actually I can come through here and add another one on top of it. So if let's say my keyboard shortcut is control 
G. And then of course you can also resize them using the resizers here and then put it wherever you'd like it to be. So if you want it to be there, you can put it there. So you can see how easy that is and, and you can see how both Camtasia and ScreenFlow kind of aim toward that screen recording training kind of presentation. And you have a couple of different styles there as well. You can also do the zoom and pan just like you can on ScreenFlow. It works a little bit different here, but you can do the zoom and pan. What I usually do is I'll go through, let's say I want to zoom and pan here. I'll go and I'll split this up here. And so I'll just do a split and then I'll take this right here and I'll adjust this box right here so it'll show you what zooms up and zooms down. There we go. Now we have our nice little zoom here. So you can see how this animation works right here. Here's our full screen view. And then just like screen flow, it'll zoom it in right there. And then whenever you're done, you want it to go back 100%. Just click this button right here and it'll do the same thing. To the book, topic, type. So that's a little close, but you can kind of see how it works. And then you want to adjust the box here so that it goes back in the center. So it kind of makes it easy, keeps it super simple. You can just go 100% right here, pull that box back on there, and you'll notice that it'll snap on whenever it's there in the center. So you can see you have it zoom in. The book, topic. And then a couple of seconds later, you can have it zoom back out to 100%. So this is great for showing pop-ups, for showing you know small items on the screen, uh, especially whenever you have such a large screen to show. And just like ScreenFlow, you can add audio effects in here. You have the same noise removal, and you have the same volume leveling. And so if you get closer and further away from the mic, or if you have multiple talkers on there and one, one person's mic is lower and one person's mic is higher, if you want to level that out, you can. Then you also have the noise removal like we talked about before. Uh, if you have a fan or air conditioner or whatever it may be, you can remove that noise. Now you also notice you have a fade in and a fade out option, so you can actually fade in you know, clip audio, music audio, things like that using this easy fade in and fade out buttons. And then also the transitions, we took a look at this before. This is gonna have a lot of the same transitions that ScreenFlow is going to have. Again, they're gonna keep it super simple. So really the only one that I use is fade to black. Occasionally I will use a just a simple fade, you know, if I'm cutting between shots, Occasionally, I'll also use a cube just to kind of represent, you know, one thought movement to another. Look. It's kind of what a cube looks like. You've probably seen that if you've watched any of our training. It just kind of moves from one thought to the other. So those are really the only three transitions I use if I ever use any. So, and you also hit this more button here, and we'll kind of talk about, you know, a few of these options. Some of them you're you're not ever going to need to worry about, uh, like captions and quizzing. They would be good, but for the vi kind of videos that we're creating, we kind of just want to keep it super simple. And captions allows you to add closed captioning onto your video. And quizzing allows you to add you know, interactive quizzes on your video as well. So cursor effects, what you can do is you can click on cursor effects here and it will offer you the same options that ScreenFlow did. You can change what the what happens whenever you have the mouse. You can hide the mouse or you can show the mouse with you know a, a larger character like a box or whatever like we did on ScreenFlow. And then you can also do voice narration and similar to what ScreenFlow did, you can do a voice overlay. So if you don't like what you voice there, you can do it over again. And it's just as simple as hitting that big start recording button. And then you also have record camera here. And so you can actually record the camera and, you know, let's say pop it up in a box right here so people can see you. You know, they can see you talking to the camera, or, you know, whatever it may be. You can also, you know, bring yourself on as an intro or you can or you can bring yourself on as an outro, you know, just to kind of introduce the, the topic. So those are a few different options of what you can do with Camtasia. Again, I'm going to recommend that you keep it as simple as possible. You know, once you get in here and you get used to editing and you get used to the simple things like that, you can actually go through here and make a few more advanced options and, and change a few more advanced settings. But for the basis and for most of the videos that you do, you know, just cutting you know, out the mess ups and cleaning up the front and the back and adding, you know, a fade in and a fade out 
is really all that needs to be done for these kind of videos. Like I mentioned before, you know, keep those three rules in mind. You know, you want to keep it super simple. And that's your main goal here. The simpler, the better. So now that you're done editing inside Camtasia, you're just going to hit this produce and share button here. And you'll notice you have a couple of different options here. You can actually upload this straight to YouTube and it will give you the same options as, as far as uploading it to YouTube. It just kind of optimizes everything and speeds everything up. So you get the same tags, you get des description and all that kind of stuff. You can do all the same options. You can also share to screencast, which is kind of TechSmith's uh, sharing site. The most popular two are these right here, the MP4 up to 480 and then MP4 to 420 so you have high definition and low definition you can also use these options down here at the bottom what they do is they actually output the mp4 embedded into a video player so you can throw it up on your website and it will be an html page so then you can direct people to so if you're throwing up just a simple replay and you, you're not very good at code, you know, you don't like to mess with all the technical stuff, you can easily upload one of these, super easy and super simple. And Camtasia will go ahead and create all those files for you. So I'm just going to hit uh, 480 here. I'm going to hit next. And it's going to ask me where to save it. I'm just going to say test here. You have a couple of different options here. You have organized produce files into subfolders. What it does is, is inside downloads, it'll actually create a new folder called test, and that's where my video will be. So it's just purely cosmetic. Where it comes in handy is for the video player option because you know you'll have a couple of different files you have the mp4 file a css file and an html file that you will all upload to your website so whenever you have this option checked organize produce files into subfolders it'll throw all those files into the same folder so they're easier to find and easier to upload and then i always do show production results so one i always know when it's done and then two it'll tell me you know if everything was okay it'll tell me that the final file size, all that kind of stuff. And you can have this option here, play video after production, completely up to you, whatever you would like. So now I'm done, I'm just gonna hit finish. Camtasia is gonna close and it's going to render out my project. So this has been a look at Camtasia and that wraps up our video editing series. In the next video, what we're gonna look at is we are going to look at a few advanced applications which you don't really need to use, but I kind of want to show you what they look like. And we'll also make sure you have the right file type. So I'll see you there.